You're listening to episode 253 of the Small and Supercharged podcast with Rhea Freeman. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of the Small and Supercharged podcast. We have got a solo episode with me today and we're going to talk about what happens when someone impersonates you. Not in real life because, top tip, if someone's got a moustache that moves around when they talk or they don't normally have a moustache, that's a top tip. But I mean online. And I wanted to share, as I had this experience happen to me a couple of weeks ago, where someone um, impersonated my account. It was very bizarre in many different ways, which I will bore you with. But I just thought it's a good thing to talk about because I know I'm not alone here. I know of a lot of accounts that are being impersonated at the moment. I know of a lot of brands that are having their accounts impersonated, particularly if they're running competitions. That seems to be like a beacon for these people. So I wanted to talk to you about my experience of it, about some of the things that were real flags to the people who spoke to me and said, I think something weird's happening. Um, Also, perhaps reveal a few things that you can just be aware of in the communications you have with people to keep yourself as protected as possible. Um, I'm sure there are other things you can do as well, but I've just been thinking about my particular thing that happened a couple of weeks ago and what were the real interesting things for me. Because to be fair to the person who did impersonate my account, they didn't do a bad job. Um, And bizarrely, and I still don't understand this to this day, It looked like they were promoting one of my courses and I don't know why. When I read a bit further down through one of the screenshots, I think then it's my thought, I don't have proof of this, but my thought is it's like a a way to gain trust before you then do another ask where you point someone in a different direction. Could be wrong, but that's what I think it might have been because I don't understand it any other way. So I'm going to share a bit about impersonation today and how to some ideas for how you can spot when people are being impersonated what you can do to help protect yourself or at the very least notify people of when you're being impersonated because I think it's really important on social media to be aware and be vigilant even if you are doing all the right things so for example my account wasn't hacked Um, I've got two-factor authentication on my account so it wasn't hacked I didn't have any to my knowledge I didn't have any email saying that there were any login attempts Um, so it wasn't a hack it was an impersonation and the person that impersonated had lifted my image the image that I use um, and I'm pretty sure I did get sent screenshots but I could never see this account which was slightly annoying And I looked from a few different accounts that I have admin access on and I couldn't see them. So it was really annoying. From that point of view, I wouldn't have known about it unless people had come forward and told me. And I wouldn't have even known about it if I was actively looking for people who are, you know, who were impersonating me because I couldn't find it. So I thought I'd share with this with you today. Um, But before we crack on with that, I am going to just give a bit of a shout out to Small and Supercharged Mastermind, my membership community group. And actually, it was a number of people in that group who did alert me to it as well, which was lovely. And I think that really does show the value of community, whether it is a paid for membership group like Mastermind or just a good community around you that get you and can understand when something isn't you. Um, But anyway, Mastermind is my membership group. It is the most incredible community of fabulous small business owners who are just the best. In addition to that, the group, inside the group, we have a weekly live Q&A session. We have Tea Break Tuesdays, which combine a mixture of meta trainings and sort of group coaching through Zoom. We have a monthly marketing masterclass. We have mindset masterclasses, we have opportunities, social media critiques and social media ideas are shared too. If you'd like more information on that, do hop on over to reafreemanpr.co.uk and go to Mastermind, which is loitering up the top there. Another perk is that these fabulous people can promote what they do inside the normal small and supercharged group as well. So let's talk about impersonation. So I believe it was Saturday night 
pretty sure it was Saturday, it might have been Sunday, it was a weekend night, and I had a message from one of my fabulous clients saying, have you contacted such and such recently? That there are real names and real people, but I haven't asked their permission to share their details, so I'm just gonna be a bit vague, but trust me that it happened. And I said, no, no, I haven't. Oh, you might have a problem then. And then I was sent some screenshots. Um, and it was really bizarre because although it clearly wasn't me and there were some real telltales that it wasn't me, for somebody that didn't know me particularly well, it would be really hard to tell the difference. So one of the things that really stuck out to me quickly was some of the language they were using. Now, in the language they were using, they had called this other person hun, like honey, hun. That is a word I do not use. Um, I use lots of words, I don't use that word. And I think that we've all got these words that we use that are part of our day-to-day -day language and words that we just wouldn't use. Um, and that to me was like a beacon. And actually I think that's what made someone think, hang on a minute, this isn't right because she doesn't say that. Um, and just the way things are put together. So those sort of, the way, you know, the, the, the subtleties in the language can be a real point to note but also something that when I was reading through the the way that the imposter fake me we'll call them was communicating didn't show any prior knowledge of the person they were talking to they were very friendly but some of the questions they were asking I knew the answer to because I've had contact with that person before we've had good chats I know them so I was looking at thinking that's strange because I know this person, so I would never ask that question. But the language was very chatty, it was very positive. They used a lot of emojis as well. Um, and I tend to use the laughing face emoji or the face palm emoji. They're like my favorite ones. I don't really use the ones that they used either, but that's quite a subtle, subtle, subtle. But it is important that I think in any communication we have through Instagram to look out for these subtleties because it can just, if you think, mm, that's weird, something isn't quite right. Next thing I would do is check their username. Now this person had borrowed my image, bless them, and, had, and their username was Rhea Freeman PR, but it had one too many E's in Freeman. So it was F-R-E-E-E-M-A-N-P-R, which is, again, really, really subtle, and you wouldn't necessarily notice it. If you're just looking, you wouldn't notice it. I've also seen with other people, underscores are used, typos are used, little things like that. So if you're not sure and you think that looks a bit weird, go out of your DMs and look at the person whose account you think it is. You can then even tap on messages and see if you've got the same message stream going. So look for the subtleties because they are real flags. So look at how they're speaking. You've got a DM from someone you're reading, you're thinking this is a bit weird, doesn't sound like them. Go and look at that username, that is the key. So I've now got my account verified, which I'm gonna to touch on shortly. And um, so I've got little blue tick as well, which I pay for. Um, and in order to get that verification, you need to provide ID that you're you. So if you've got someone that you communicate with the blue tick and someone is chatting to you who doesn't have the blue tick but pretending to be that person, that's a red flag as well. But do have a look at that username as well. Too many E's, underscores, what's going on there? And of course, if that is wrong, then something awry is happening. So we've got how they're speaking. We have got the username is the real, real flag. That's the way you can check. But if you haven't kind of got there yet, the next thing that tends to happen is links get posted, links get shared. Now, as I said, in the case of my impersonator, it did look like the link was to a genuine page on my website, which I still think is very strange to this day. Because I didn't receive the message, I couldn't make sure that the link was what it said it was, but I would never say to anyone to click it anyway, because who knows, if it's where it says it is, that's just strange. If it isn't, you don't want to be going there. So that's strange. Um, what I think we see quite a lot, particularly with brands that run competitions when they have imposter accounts set up, is they are contacting people and saying, you've won this prize, just click here to claim it don't do that. If you think you've won a prize from a brand, don't click, go out, go back into the actual account and maybe send them a direct message. That would be the way I would do it. I would not be clicking on links nowadays. So many people 
have these impersonation accounts set up, particularly when there's big value there and they have links that they share, don't click those. Also, what I'm seeing more and more, which I love, is when brands run competitions, they are very, very clear on how they're going to contact you. So they will very clearly say an end date and then they will say, we will contact you through here. We will contact you through direct message or whatever. Um, so make sure that if you are being contacted, it makes sense for the competition you've entered. But even if there's a link there, I wouldn't be thrilled about that. Um, it would not be the first thing I do. I do a lot of extra checking first. Even if you message that person and say, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with this. Is there another way we can do it? Um, I don't think that many brands would expect you to click on links now. And I cannot think of anyone. I've been racking my brains about this um, because I say, I can't think of anyone. And then someone says, yeah, yeah, it happens. I cannot think of any brand that I have seen that has a way to claim a prize as clicking a link through a direct message. I don't think, if you're running a competition and you're listening to this and you were thinking of doing that, I really wouldn't. Um, that's how a lot of impersonation accounts and scams work. So I wouldn't do that. I would remove yourself from that. So just make sure that you're clicking on genuine links. And if you're concerned, don't click on that link. Go the long way around. Um, you know, go back out of it. Go back into the right account that you follow and make sure that, that, it is, that it is correct. Send them a direct message, send them an email. Do not be clicking links you're not sure about. Now let's say we've worked through, we've thought, hang on a minute, this isn't right. You've done your checks, you've worked it out, it's not right. What I would say then is it's really helpful, or it seemed to help me, is to have the screenshots of what's been said because it adds extra proof because I couldn't find the account that was impersonating me. And to have evidence in the form of a screenshot of what was happening was really, really useful because then I could share that information. I did check with someone who sent me a screenshot that I could share um, uh, uh, what, what they'd sent me essentially onto my stories to say, this isn't right, this is not me, this is an impersonation account, please do not click anything, please report them. But having that screenshot as well, when I moved through to reporting, I did upload screenshots as evidence. Um, so if you see a fake account that someone's contacting you and you're not happy with it, please do screenshot it. It's it's not necessarily for your benefit, but it does help the person being impersonated a lot because they can see what's going on. Report it. There is a report button you can press. That's a really good thing to do because it does flag it to the system. And then tell that person. Um, if you want to DM them and say, this has happened. If you know them by email, WhatsApp, email, um, yeah, email WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, whatever. Please, please tell them because if I hadn't been told, I wouldn't have known because I couldn't even find that account. So please do tell them, report it, send them the screenshots. If you are not happy to have your like name on there, just ask them to you know cut them out if they're going to promote it properly, as in push it on their stories or things like that. But it is really useful to have that, even if they have the screenshot and they chop a bit off so they can just see that name and the kind of language that's being used because the chances are they're copying and pasting that and moving that around the place. So super, super useful if you do that for them. And then if it's you, if you're the person being impersonated, I mean, I have to say, it feels horrible. Um, I also felt awful because these people thought it was me and they were being really lovely to this impersonator, fake me, and were being really nice to them and, and then, it was just, the whole thing was bizarre and I felt awful for them and I apologised. I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And then one person that messaged me went, well, you shouldn't be saying sorry, it wasn't you. And I went, no, I was, it wasn't me, but I still feel bad because, you know, they've obviously gone to effort and as in the, the person that's received those messages has gone to effort to report it, to screenshot it. And I have to say, when I did share that screenshot, I had loads of people message me, and thank you if you were one of them, to say, reported, reported, reported. Thank you so, so much. Um, I think that is a real test of the incredible community that Instagram can be. So thank you, I really appreciated that. Um, it was nice to know that other people are in your corner when other people are trying to be fake you. So thank you for that. 
what I then did is I couldn't report it myself because I couldn't find it. So I took the step of getting verified on Facebook. No, I didn't. I took the step of getting verified on Instagram. Sorry, I met her generally, but it was Instagram I got verified on. Now, this is a monthly subscription that you pay. I'm not going to say whether you should or shouldn't do it. This is my experience and why I did it. I did it because one of the positives of having a verified subscription, a meta verified subscription, is you do get access to support and there is also additional impersonation monitoring for your account. So I thought, right, I want to get this gone because it looks it looks like me and it isn't me. And I didn't like that at all. So I did pay for the verification. It was $11.99 a month. And then what you have to do as well is, is upload a form of ID. I sent a picture of my passport, but I think you can also do driving license. There's a list, you send that image and then that they work that through their system. So that all went through very, very quickly. And then I was able to go into the Instagram app um, and report it on an elevated way. So I filled in a form, I uploaded the screenshots I kindly been sent, I put in all the details that were relevant, and then I got um, a, a confirmation that I'd sent that information through via email, which was marvellous. And that was, let's say it was nine o'clock at night. Um, it was ballpark nine o'clock at night. I woke up the next day at seven in the morning and I had an email saying this, the account, the one I reported had broken guidelines and had been removed. And since then, no one's been able to find it. So I said this to someone, they said, oh yeah, you shouldn't have to pay for that. And in some ways I agree. However, um, this is a platform that is accessed by billions of people. And if you can get enhanced security, because in addition to the um, the kind of enhanced account support for common issues, there is this impersonation monitoring for accounts as well. And you do also get that verified badge. Um, our, the particular appeal for me was getting that, getting that um, impersonation account removed. I like the fact that there is active impersonation monitoring on this on my account now, which I do like. And I like the fact that there is account support for common issues. You could argue that that should exist anyway. I do think that we have to be mindful of the size of the meta platform and how many billions of people use it. And this is a free platform. So I'm not saying you're wrong or right, but I'm just kind of putting it into context. And actually for so many of us, we use our Instagram for more than just sharing our story. We use it to help build our brands. We use it to help grow our businesses. Uh, we use it to help grow our personal brands, to promote causes, to make connections. So for that, really, when you think of 12 pounds in the grand scheme of things per month, um, in my opinion for me, it's worth it. It might not be worth it for you. That's absolutely up to you. But I just wanted to share my experience because I think through sharing experiences, we, we learn a whole lot more. So that was my experience of it. Um, in terms of how you can protect yourself from being impersonated, I think that's incredibly difficult. Hopefully the meta verification will help if you do go down that route. You know, that's one of the reasons that I have got it. Um, other than that, I think it is being very clear how you run things like competitions to help people even if you are impersonated they'll know you well enough to know that's not you and i think if you are notified that you have been impersonated acting quickly asking for the, kind of the evidence asking for the screenshots and telling your fans and followers quickly as you can is really all that you can do um if there's anyone who has got any additional information on this and you know other ways that you can help to protect yourself um, please do let me know. I would say as well, even though this was impersonation, not um, someone hasn't stolen my account, it's another shout out for two-factor authentication. Because even when this was going wrong, I was thinking, oh, well, initially I thought, oh gosh, I've been hacked. And then I thought, I haven't had any notification saying, there's been a strange login. Um, and I've got the the code app thing that you you put in when you try and log in from new devices. So I thought, 
although I had this kind of wave of sick feeling that I'd been hacked, I then realised I'd been impersonated. And I thought, okay, that's not good, but at least I haven't been hacked. And then I was so, so grateful I had got my two-factor authentication set up. So if you haven't, have this as a sign to look into it. It's super, super easy to do. You, I think there's different ways that you can do it. I've got an authentication app and it generates a code every, I want to say 30 seconds. I can't remember, but I think it's 30 seconds. Um, and actually it works across quite a few different apps. And the idea of it is to help keep your account safer. I don't think it's bulletproof. I don't think anything is bulletproof. But I think that if there are ways that you can protect your accounts, things like being impersonated do make you really realise it and go, actually, you know what, I'm going to put the work in and make sure I'm absolutely up to date with everything. I know I've got two factor on, I think I've got it on everything. I definitely know I've got it on Instagram, but I am going to make sure my other accounts are absolutely sorted as well because I do think that whilst it's very it's incredibly annoying if you get impersonated if you have fake accounts it is it's not your fault if you have your account hacked or if you are impersonated however I think that it's peace of mind knowing that you've done all that you can to protect yourself and also protect your fans and followers because if you have your account hacked properly that person who does look like you, so all the impersonation things we went through wouldn't have done anything because it would be your account. You know, they're potentially sending links and things. And again, I'm not saying this is your fault. I mean, I hope never to get hacked. I really do. And I'm going to do all I can to prevent that. But I know these things happen. But I think that if you've done all you possibly can do, it could still happen, but you know deep down you've done your best. So take this as a signal as a sign to just go and check you've got that two-factor authentication as well. It is free and it is important. It can make a big difference. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope that's been useful. I'd love your thoughts on this. If you hop over to my Instagram, Maria Freeman PR, tell me if you've ever been impersonated, how you got around it, how you got that account removed, or if you did or any tips that you have learnt or found about this to either help keep you non-impersonable, that's not a word, or things that you've noticed when you've been contacted by people who are impersonating others. I would love to know, uh, because I think it's a really important issue. Keeping ourselves safe and protected online is super, super important. So anything we can do to share, let's get that shared. Thank you so much for joining me today. Massively appreciate your time as always. Um, if you've got a few minutes and you fancy leaving a lovely review, I'd be incredibly grateful. Five stars is the win. But if you hop over to the platform that you listen on, please do rate and review the podcast. It really does help people get to know about it and encourages them to listen. Thank you so much for listening today. Take care and we'll catch up soon.